Wheels up, we're heading to Dallas, Texas for the 2021 Node Expo. Find out what we learned, who missed their flights, and how much fun we had next on the Paper Stack Podcast. Coming to you from sunny Orlando, Florida. Welcome to the Paper Stack Podcast, where we cover current topics in the note industry, give you tactics for your note business, and talk with industry leaders to make you a better note investor. And now, your hosts... Brett Berkey and Rick Hey, welcome Allen. back to the Paper Stack Podcast. Rick Allen, Brett Berkey here, fresh off the plane. <laughs> yeah. From uh, Node Expo. We want to do a Node Expo recap. Node Expo 21, Dallas, Texas, at the uh, Hilton, the airport Hilton. The embassy. Embassy Suites by Hilton. The north one, not the south one, in case you got lost on your way there. Yes. There's the one, two. There's two embassy, sp- embassy suites in Grapevine. The one right by the big Bass Pro Shop. I didn't get to go. No. I got a hat, though. Thanks, uh, Daniel Singer. So, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, so my daughter stole it as soon as I got home. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like, it oh, was, uh, we want to do a little recap. It was great. There was tons of stuff there, um, tons of people. First one I've been to in person again, big conference where everybody kind of showed up, mm-hmm. uh, showed out. I know they had been probably cracking the, the 600 person mark in in the year in 2019 last year in 2020 was virtual Mm -hmm. but this year they had like 400 or over over 400 people there was a lot of people it was a there was a lot of people yeah it was it was good it was a good turnout i I was impressed i was oh wow they really did it and i mean the room was huge for the the event oh it was mad they needed it they needed a big room it was it was a big room so we want to start by saying thank you to eddie speed bob repass eddie speed bob repass um Mm -hmm. You know, Joe Varnador, everybody there who helped put this on. MC. MC, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't even try to pronounce your last name. I'll mess that one up. But it's Polish. It is Polish. Yeah, and she, I don't she speak. told me what it was, and I was like, oh. So it was good, though. Great event. Um, we met some new people, a lot of new people. Um, it was fantastic. We had a bunch of shirts. We had a bunch of shirts that were there. and Yes, we did. So if you so, didn't get a shirt. Now they're global. They made it all the way to Israel. They did. We are. Yeah, we, we yeah. have. Yes, yeah, so that was great. That was cool. And so, yeah, it was good. I mean, some of the uh, some of the things that were really neat were. Uh, I like the food, and so we had you know a lot of good sweets. Um, there was a lot of different sweets for a couple of days, and then uh, they had this. I guess it would be like a Spanish food, Mexican like food bar. Like they had one of the days, and that was that was amazing. And then we had, we got to eat. You missed it, but uh, we went to Heart Eight. It was this barbecue place and had some brisket. And gosh, that was the best brisket I've ever had in my life. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was really good. I mean, it was really unique. It was outside. It was like picnic tables and the guys grilling it up right in front of you, like over open fire. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. It was a really cool experience. It was it was unique. You know, like you're like, hey, we'll go to a barbecue place. And you think the kitchen's in the back. You're you're in the kitchen. You're walking through and you're like, I'll take that one and that one and that one. And they just chop it up for you right in front of you. And it was uh, it was definitely cool. So and got I got a slice of Texas. It was good. Yeah, I, I thought I got baked beans, but I had, I got cobbler. I, I was like, I went to dungeon. What the How did you is? mess that up? And it was purple. It was dark, and I, I was like, oh, I have baked beans. Okay, baked beans. I got baked. I was like, I don't even want this. It was sweet, and I was like, oh man, went the so baked beans. We uh, yeah, we flew in on Thursday, got in kind of early noon, mm-hmm. and then went and we had actually we had an investor pitch because we're raising capital mm-hmm. for people to invest in the company. So we went and. Mm-hmm. Um, Pitched capital there, and then we immediately were like, well, we went out to eat, Mm -hmm. and it was really cool. We got to meet some of the people who actually watch our podcast. That was cool. That was great. So if we did meet you, um, Emery, I know we met Emery, Mm -hmm. um, DJ. Oh, yeah, DJ. We met DJ. Uh, There was was quite a few people we met. I probably forget their names, but it was Mm -hmm. good to sit down and talk with people and say, wow, there's people listening. Yeah, that's kind of neat. That was pretty cool. What's some other highlights of the event? Um, I guess just hanging around. I, I, yeah, I will say this. The, uh, you know, one of the things I love about the, the in-person things, it's just there's no way to get it at the virtual. Even if they have the virtual happy hours or this and that, it is the connections and the people you make outside of being in the conference. Yes, you're coming to our booth. We're going to talk to you. We're going to meet you. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you, 
I met some incredible people on Thursday night before the conference even started. Mm -hmm. And it was 8 30, 9 o'clock, and we were, you know, kind of just had been doing the the note school appreciation event and stopping in there to shake some hands and see some people as you know, I'm part of a note, I'm part of note school. Um went there. But then when we went into the sort of the restaurant slash bar at the the you know, the hotel, mm -hmm. it was just a whole different experience. You know, it was just a, another layer, layer. A lot of people I knew, um, a lot of people I've done deals with, uh, some of my attorneys were in there. But then there was a ton of people I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And it was really, really cool to get in there and meet just a lot of different people. And it was, what was amazing is in the room, there was everybody from people who had just got into the note business a month ago mm -hmm. to... You know, Jack Kruby walks in the room and he's raised a huge five hundred million dollar fund and exited and stuff like that. So it was everything in between. Yeah, there was you know attorneys there, the sharpest of the sharp attorneys. Uh, there were people who do you know podcasts, who people who do have platforms. Mm -hmm. It was just it was a really great experience, and that's what I love about the in person. Yeah, no is that, that's just you're not getting that virtually, no. right? You're not. There's no way what happened there we would have ever got that virtually. Yeah, my favorite part is being able to ask people what they like. You know, features you can really, when someone's describing something, you can kind of see, okay, this, you can see that it bugs them or they really want it. Oh, I wish it did this. You can tell by their facial features, like, you know, that, that's, that's something we need to fix. Or, to like, it would be awesome if it does this. And that's usually when I go, hold that thought. Hey, Mike, I'm going to get Mike and a drag him over here. Like, say it again. Say it, say it to this guy. Get it stuck in his head. Just get that lodged somewhere and he'll... He'll have it there, and we did that a lot with the due diligence stuff. Uh, it's a couple of different. A lot of the stuff that that have come from the platform have come from our our trips, right? Yeah, I mean a lot of stuff. I mean, maybe two years ago there was some stuff that um, uh, Sham knew I was talking about that you know he wish it did, and you know I could see Mike's wheels turning, and he's like, oh, okay, and then he finally you know it's stuff it it trickles on. It's like one of those things where you didn't even make it as a feature, like it wasn't like a feature request. It just all of a sudden Mike's like. There it is. And they just, you know, he's doing something else. He just it gets it. baked into the platform. Yeah, and it's yeah. just uh, always looking for ways to refine. So it was good. The uh, the content that you could that was provided by Note School. I know we had some representation up on some of the panels talking about, um, you know, marketing and social media. Mm -hmm. That was great. But there's just so much content there, ranging from you know that to note specifics to speaking um, with note industry professionals and just there was tons of different yeah uh, no it's good well, <laughs> one of the funniest things was when Fred Rui came over to our <laughs> oh my gosh so Fred Rui <laughs> you should tell the story but he like well, I guess oh, apparently he's a dude. walks you know he wanted a shirt yeah. And so, you know, he, I was on a panel with Fred and I was like, oh, I'm going to give him the shirt and joke with him that he needs to wear the paper stack shirt on the panel. Well, I, I flew out Friday and I guess Fred took it upon himself <laughs> to put the shirt on and then come to our booth, our vendor booth, and start working for paper stack and tell people all about it, the platform. It was funny. It was so, so funny. Because people were just walking up and he's... he's doing this spiel and he's talking and, and they, they wouldn't have known any different but I was just dying laughing because I was he's like yeah that's just automated to do this and, da, 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 da. and I was like well, he knows it pretty well that's, that's what I would have said but yeah that's good it was just funny he had the shirt on he's like these guys work for me like he was like talking to me and Mike it was it was funny that's good we yeah, yeah. so what are the good stuff there's good food uh, there's good food I mean it sucks me and Mike missed our first flight <laughs> let's let's dive into that Brett let's dive into that so you know I had to I had to leave I, I had to leave because I already had a hunting trip planned in Ohio. So I got off stage and literally got onto a plane and flew out of there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next day, I, I believe I was in, what time are you supposed to fly out? 6.45. 6.45. Yeah, on Saturday. So it was like right at last hunting light, basically. Uh, like right when the, right the magic hour, when the deers really start running around. And I get a text from Brett that they're, they're, we may miss their flight. Oh yeah, no. What we, happened? <laughs> I don't. I, I, well, no, no. Tell me what happened. Well, what it ha says, tell them what happened. They want to know. It says it leaves at six forty-five, but I didn't know that. Mean like the wheels are up and they're rolling down the tarmac type thing at six forty-five. So we were like, we we got there at four and we sat there and we had dinner and you know Mike <laughs> ate a cake and all kinds of stuff and we're just kind of like, oh, we got we got a little bit and I, we, we were like, oh, we, when we were done, we're like, okay, let's start walking that way and we're like, oh, let's use the restroom. I think that if we hadn't used the restroom, that that would have probably we would have made it because we walked up and we're like, what, what does this closed mean? What's that, what's that mean closed? And 
And the flight's gone. And I was like, no, no, we're here 15 minutes beforehand. What's going on? And the, the, the lady came out and she was like, oh, no, I was here. I was here. And we're like, you weren't here because we were here. And we were here 15 minutes. Like, you know, and she's like, she kind of knew that she got caught in a lie. She kind of looked at us like, hmm. And I was like, okay. And so she gave us the other tickets. I, I was wanting to get out of there because there was another guy standing there going, he wasn't wearing a mask. He, and he was, you know, Mark, then he needs a cigarette. I need a cigarette. Oh, this is stressing me out. And he was, had been drinking a lot. Oh, and I was like, no. I was like, oh, there's one of those smoking rooms over there. He's like, where? I was like, it's right over there. I'm just trying to get him to go away. And he's like, I thought this was a red state when they're trying to get him to put the mask on. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to end up on That's social media. Federal FAA regulation. Get my ticket. I got to get out of here before they yeah. think we're all together. I can tell you if I was there, <laughs> I would not have missed my flight. Well, we almost missed the second one. We almost missed I'm the getting texts, and I'm just like, oh. I was. I, I was, step away from these two for one minute, and they're missing <laughs> flights. And I was really scared about the second one. I was like, oh my god, we're gonna have to go back to the hotel. I'm not staying here till like one in the morning. And actually, I think I was the last flight. It was the last flight. <laughs> it was the last flight. So we're like, we're not missing this one. So I'm like, we'll sit right here at this bar, and we'll look at the the gate. I can see it's right there. And so we're like, all right, let's go. We got enough time. And we walk over, and I was like. What's, why does that say closed? And they're like, oh, yeah, we rerouted the flight. It's, it's now Terminal C. I was like, you got to be freaking kidding me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I was like, oh, my God, please tell them that we're, we're coming. So we had to, like, we're, like, running through the airport. And we're getting on the train. And, like, you know, like oh, my gosh, we're going to miss this. And Mike's like, we're stuck. And I was like, oh, no. I, I was so worried. But we got there, like, right in time. Just, like, you know. Did they close the doors after you got on? Yeah, we were, like, the last two that got on. And then we got on. I was like, thank God. But that, you know, that was that was, I was like, if I miss this flight again, I'll, I'll be so disappointed. I, I probably wouldn't have told Rick. I, if, if we had missed the second flight, I probably just would have kept that one to myself. You know. <laughs> so proud. I'm so proud. Such a proud dad. Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, but Note Expo overall was really good. I look forward to whatever comes up next. In the spring, there's going to be some other stuff. Yeah, there's other stuff coming up in the spring. Um, you know, for those of you who we met there, can't wait till we bump into each other again. Hope yeah. it's not too long before we bump into each other again at a. Yeah, I think the next one's going to be Paper Source, which is I've already started talking to Allison, see if that's going to happen in the spring. Because so, people were asking me what's the next one. I was like, Paper Source. And I was like, I better make sure it's going on. I think DME is going to be in person in the spring. Oh, that's right. Yeah, DME that, that's in March. Saint, in St. Pete. Mm -hmm. So. We'll now, that'd be good for us. I, I won't miss that flight because there won't be one. No. no just, just be driving. <laughs> just be a drive um, over. And then I think we'll, I mean, we probably will have a pretty full calendar next year. Well, there's DME and there's IMN. IMN. Back to back. One. Yeah. So is IMN like the, the Fort day. Lauderdale. It's like DME two days and then IMN the next two days. So it's is like, it, is the IMN's in Fort Lauderdale, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, so it'll be fun. But I mean, overall, any, any of the major takeaway golden nugget of education that you got? Um, not golden nugget of education. Um, I, you know, like I said, I, I was third or Friday when I was there. Um, I was either at the booth or I was kind of talking to people. And so I didn't get to go in and, and consume a lot of the, the education I saw was there and I saw who was presenting and it was pretty good. Um, I think the biggest takeaway for me was everybody was ready to be back. Everybody was really happy to be obviously, if you were there, you were happy to be there. Um, mm -hmm. And I think everybody who who went was like, "This was really worth it." It was worth it. Definitely it was worth, worth it. it. Everybody. I mean, just again, um, if you're going to an event, you're what you're going to take out of it is really, in my opinion, is it's the education. You always can soak up a couple nuggets, but the connections you made, um, some of the people we talked to, um, I see some pretty good things on the horizon for us just from the people we talked to there, yeah. you know, some larger transactions. So it was, for me, it was just good to be back talking to people, shaking hands, meeting new people, building the network, mm -hmm. um, reconnecting with old friends and, and colleagues that, you know, you hadn't seen or talked to in person in a while. Mm -hmm. And there's just no, if you're, if you're in this business, it's a network business. It's mm -hmm. a, it's who do you know? Yeah. And, you know, Paper stack solves a lot of those problems with inventory and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's you really are making connections. Yeah, true. I did. I did. What about get, you? I got some golden nuggets. So, uh, so I, was, I forget who I was talking to, but I learned something about the CARES Act. You know that you know during the CARES Act when that was released, banks don't have to report their delinquent debt. 
And so there's a lot of delinquent debt that's not being reported. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was something that was put baked into that. And with the coming moratorium lift and the fact they don't have to report what they have on the books for debt, they're gonna they're gonna just kind of maybe scooch that out the back door to some larger head funds and eventually it'll trickle down to the retail market. Something else that was telling for me was someone we were talking about how Zillow just packed up shop and said, forget this, we're done. And it's like not done being Zillow, they're oh, just yeah, yeah. done with the uh the iBuyer. Yeah, I buyer thing. But the, the I buyer stuff. And the reason why is most people are like, oh, that just didn't work for them. And what mm -hmm. we were talking about is that they see something on the horizon because they have the data. And what they're seeing is there's going to be influx of inventory, foreclosure is going to go. And what the problem is, is they bought over top what the market can bear. Mm -hmm. And they pay too much and they're going to be upside down on everything right. they have. And so if they're, if they're seeing that now and they're quitting and you know, they're selling... I mean, that's not a canary, yeah. a canary in the coal mine, but maybe it is. No, but I know one of the things you need to you need to think about, and I don't know if people dive in and look this deep at it, but Zillow, yes, they provide you with some values. Yes, it's a place where you can list a house. Yes, they were doing the I buy thing, but really, the data aggregation that oh, they have sure. is is huge. Because they also own Zillow and Trulia. Yeah. Two so if ones. you start looking at that stuff, you say, okay. With the amount of data they're collecting, they can start making those strategic moves to enter or pull out of a market. So those are definitely, you know, look at the data, look what they're doing, look at the big guys. They're not. Yeah, the forecasting. I mean, they're yeah. they're, they're forecasting, and and I think, I think it might be a can, can, canary in the coal mine. I got well, that one. It, I got that saying right. You did, but if you start if you so if you start combining the two, right? Yeah. So you combine what you said about the CARES Act. The CARES Act, the, the moratorium you, lift. The moratorium lift, and you kind of just put all, and that's what we do in the note business, right? We try to put together the story from the data that's given. Well, it's mm -hmm. no different right now. You're looking at the market. If the CARES Act, they don't have to report delinquencies. Mm -hmm. And you've got um, moratoriums lifting. Mm -hmm. You're going to see an increase in foreclosures, which means more supply in the market. And you've got Zillow looking at it and Zillow pulling out. Yeah, indica those are indicators, right? And almost at, at, a, at a, a level that's worse than last time. So in the terms of foreclosures and things, a lot of the people that are going to get foreclosed on are landlords because the renters aren't paying. And the thing is, when you go to foreclose, it's not their primary residence, so it's going to be a faster foreclosure time. Mm -hmm. So you're going to – I mean, those things, like, it's, it's just kind of a – you know, it's a storm brewing, and it's going to happen. And I kind of – you know, that was kind of the sentiment that I got when I was talking to some of the – Bigger players in the room, like, okay, you know, they're all saying the same thing. And if everyone's kind of saying the same thing, it's like, okay, get ready, you know, mm -hmm. 2022 should be interesting. So it is going to be interesting. And it's not going to happen like once the clock strikes midnight on <laughs> no. December 31st. It'll be like summer. It'll be summer, but it'll it'll start to happen. It'll start to trickle. And I could see it bleeding into the fall, really, yeah. uh, is, is because 2022, 2023, I mean, it, Things are just unbearable. Everything's overpriced right now, not only in the housing, but everything. You know, everyone's getting, making money on everything. It's like, you're making money on stocks, you're making money on crypto, you're making money on hard assets, like, you know, I mean, like, on houses. Mm -hmm. Everything's overpriced. Everyone's buying in for value and trying uh, to write it. And it's tons of inflation, tons of inflation. So, yeah. anyways, that's not what we were here. We're here to talk about Node Expo. That's, I know, but that was it. That was it. I know. So, we that was a good nugget of takeaway. It wouldn't have been a podcast if, if I didn't go off on a tangent. Reel them back in. <laughs> I fish too. I just pull them in. Um, well, yeah, okay, cool. Well, so, yes. So Anything is, else? Nope, that's it. Well, yeah, um, are we going to wrap this up with a little video to follow up with on food and stuff like that? or? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll overlay it as we're going. Overlay it. So you're probably seeing overlays now because... Yeah, there's 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 a sandwich floating around here somewhere. There's, there's a sandwich <laughs> floating around here somewhere too, yeah. So anyways, thank you again, Bob, Eddie, Everybody there at Node School, Node Expo, Colonial Funding. Mm -hmm. um, it was fun. It was a good event. Looking forward to it as next year. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I do realize we have 13 pounds of uh, little bag. We were the bag sponsor coming That's back. Right. So we have 13 pounds of bags showing up back here. So yeah. if you want a little ditty bag to throw stuff in, let us know in the comments below. And we'll That'd be good. Yeah, that, no, we're not, we don't need that many bags. No, my wife, I told her we had 13 pounds of those coming back. She's like, no, you don't. <laughs> they're, not, they're not coming here. That's right. For Halloween, we're going to, what are you handing out? Bags. <laughs> yeah. So it was good. Anyways, um, Node Expo 2021, it's a wrap. It's in the books. Um, that's the last event for the year. So stay tuned. We will have some more stuff coming up. What's on the horizon, Brett? Thanksgiving. 
Thanksgiving is on the horizon. Thanksgiving's on the horizon. The holidays are coming. What about for the Paper Stack podcast? What are we looking forward to? Oh, uh, we got Jack a Jack Krupe interview. We've got, we got a whole a, bunch of stuff. I, I set up a whole bunch of cool things. So we have the win, lose, and win, lose, and learn. That's still going on. We have a new series that's going to be happening. It's going to be the Gotchas of Law. I mean, so we're going to have the different lawyers from the different states that I talked to while we were there, and uh, we're going to have you know, tell me the things that can bite you when you're. Buying a note in Georgia or buying a note in Florida. What's mm-hmm. some of the things that people missed that, you know, gotchas, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I got all the lawyers lined up to come on. And so if you personally have a question about a certain state, let me know. We're going to have try to have it as much as we can. See if I can get Daniel Singer to uh, represent the West Coast. But we got, you know, Northeast and Midwest and, uh, you know, South, mm-hmm. Southeast all kind of covered. And, uh, yeah, if you know a lawyer for some of the states out West... Yeah, we, we want to have this because we want everyone to be able to watch those and use them as reference points. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much everything. That's, that's what's coming for the foreseeable future. The, for the for the what future? Foreseeable. The foreseeable. <laughs> you got it right the second time. <laughs> in a mouthful of marbles on the first one. So. Yeah. Anyways, that's, that's what we got. We'll catch you on the next episode. See ya.